Hello, I'm JW. Now I've looked at uh, metal boxes in the past and this time I'm going to have a look at plastic ones. I've got a couple of stars of these, these things which are designed for flush mounting and then we've also got some of these which are for mounting on the surface. So uh, let's have a close look at those and also how they might actually fit into a wall. Now these are boxes to put uh, sockets and switch things on but these are designed to go flush in the wall but into walls made from plasterboard, also known as sheetrock or drywall. And uh, these again can be fitted from the outside, so it's just a question of cutting the hole, placing this into the hole there, and then it's secured in place with these two yellow tabs here. And just as with the metal ones, they come in the uh, usual double and single sizes, so generally for double sockets or single and things like light switches and other items. Now in terms of the depth of these, these are about the shallowest ones you can get tend to be a bit deeper than the metal ones because of course in a wall that's pretty much going to be empty and hollow it doesn't actually matter too much with the depth so there's not uh, as much choice as you only get those silly thin 16mm ones you can get deeper ones like this one which again is similar to a 45 or 47mm we saw on the metal ones but uh, again there's not usually a huge choice there because it doesn't actually matter putting them into a wall that's pretty much hollow now so these are the usual ones which are single and double you can also get, as with the others, this thing here, which is a dual box, which is basically two singles that are fixed into the same moulding, so they can get two singles nicely lined up next to each other. And a word of warning with these things, if you're going to put these in the wall, it's actually extremely difficult to put two of these things right next to each other, because if you go and do that, well, there's obviously going to fit, but the problem is then, when they press the lugs out, which we'll have a look at in a minute, of course there's nowhere for in the middle for these to grip so if you're going to put two of these in the wall next to each other you do have to leave a sensible amount of gap in the middle something like that otherwise when you press the lugs out they'll basically overlap and of course it won't actually be possible to get them in there so uh, things like this of course uh, do exist say with the uh, all in one piece just as the two lugs either side and in a similar line to that you can also get these which is a double and a single next to it and again that's for the same reason as if you had say a double or a single next to each other again they don't fit right up again so you'd have to leave a sort of inch or so gap between them but uh, pretty standard construction there they've just got some little knockout bits here for where the cables could enter either the top or the bottom of course rear entry is an option as well but uh, generally in a hollow wall it's uh, top or bottom and things like the thread sizes all exactly the same so it's that uh, metric 3.5 millimeter and again the spacing between them for the single double exactly the same as for the metal boxes so of course any socket or whatever easily goes on the front there now in terms of installing these in the wall it's simply a question of cutting a hole into the plasterboard which is the dimensions of this back section and then uh, placing this into the hole and then these tabs here basically secured in position so uh, these two can just press out once you put it in the wall you press sideways in like that and then you can actually pull these forward and they will snap into place and that will basically grip onto the plasterboard or whatever here so you've actually got your wall here and then that just grips on like that and again that just gives you then the two threaded bits there for connecting the socket or whatever to that and uh, these ones uh, do actually have some movement in that so it can carbonate different thicknesses of wall there and of course when you tighten up the screws here that will actually pull that tight against the back of the plasterboard so it of course holds that securely in position now note these only go back a certain distance, so in terms of having, say, double thickness of plasterboard, these things do not really work very well, but uh, nevertheless uh, they're really designed just for a single sheet, which is only about 12.5mm thick. Now there is another style which uh, you don't get in the metal ones, which is this thing, and this is the same kind of fixing, it just with snap-out tabs there. And this is a round box, fairly limited in use, but they do have uses mainly in, say, a ceiling, so you could put this in the ceiling, so then put a smoke alarm or something over the front of that, smoke alarms being uh, circular in most cases. Or in theory you could put this on the ceiling and then attach a ceiling rose to that. Although don't know, that's not done, it's normally just put the ceiling rose on there and uh, poke a little hole through the plasterboard. But nevertheless these do exist, so uh, worth considering for a few applications, but say fairly limited in their actual uses. Now when it comes to actually putting these things in a plasterboard wall then uh, you can use the metal boxes as we've got here but the problem with that is that you need something in the back there to actually fix them to because if you just take this one out of here the actual box itself doesn't have any kind of fixings for that so 
what you need to do is to install usually a piece of timber in the back here and you can also get metal things which uh, do the same job so that when you in, uh, put this in the hole you actually got something to uh, screw into on the back there and that's just a question of putting a screw in the center there to secure it in position now the problem with that is of course you have to put all that stuff in the wall before the uh, plasterboard or whatever goes on the front so certainly for a new construction that's not a problem but obviously if you're coming along afterwards then uh, pretty much going to be impossible because to get that uh, stuff in there you've got to make a massive hole in the wall and then obviously reinstate that afterwards which clearly isn't going to happen and have a look at the back of this one this is a fairly sort of typical wall construction so just got the uh, timbers here this would normally be plasterboard this is a piece of mdf because it's uh, a bit more robust than that plasterboard for moving around but uh, see what we've got here is a piece of timber just fixed across the back there at the relevant depth so that the box can screw onto that and as with the uh, solid wall the idea is that when it's in the wall the actual box is flush with the front of the plasterboard so then of course when it's uh, fitted on the front there's no bits uh, sticking out or it's recessed too far in and you get the edge crumbling away so metal boxes certainly can be used there and I say it's fine to uh, say put those in there and then it's just a single screw it's got here just to secure that in the middle but, so the problem then is you've got to actually do all that sort of before or at least while the wall is being constructed otherwise obviously you uh, have no way of really getting in there afterwards so that's really where things like the plastic boxes come in you can fit these from the front so in terms of installing these just a question of making the appropriate sized hole there and then the box just presses into the hole. So we've got our suitably sized hole and the box here just uh, places into that. So that just presses in. And then the two side tabs, just a question of snapping those into place. So it presses through and then it pulls forward. And then it just locks into position like that. And then you can obviously fit your box or whatever on the front. And in case you can bring in the top or bottom or at the back, doesn't uh, particularly matter. And the same principle with the uh, single ones, of course, just obviously slightly smaller. So again, it's just placing the hole and then just snap those tabs into position. Now here's a look on the back. You obviously wouldn't normally see this, but obviously this is a demonstration board, so we can see that there. So this one has been installed. You can see that the box just pops through. And then we've got the actual tabs here, which uh, overlap and basically just grip onto the uh, plasterboard there to prevent the box from pulling through. And of course, when you tighten up the screws, it will actually pull these tight. So it then grips here really securely and for the actual installation of them it's just uh, press this through from the uh, front there and then what's actually happening is that the tabs here will just snap out on the side there and then they just pull forward like that so if we just do the other one as well so it's just press them outwards like that and then they're actually just snapping forwards to again lock it in position with those two sort of wings on either side and on the front of us it looks pretty much the same and the round one although it's a somewhat different shape because it's pretty much the same fitting so again it's just snap those through and then just pull them forward to lock that into position now there's nothing particularly wrong with using these there's just a couple of things to be aware of that uh, if you're going to just put them in the wall and then actually put the socket over straight away there is a thin plastic lip all the way around the edge so on certain types of sockets and things particularly those flat plate things when you've screwed it over the front that lip may be visible so that may not be entirely desirable the way to avoid that is to put these in first and then when the wall is uh, skim plastered of course then it will just take up the uh, thickness of that so you won't see it but uh, of course normally that will be on a new wall which means you could probably use the metal ones for that anyhow so if you are doing that then that, that's something to consider and uh, the other thing to consider as well is that say if you're going to put these in the wall as I said before you need to leave a decent gap between them otherwise when you press the lugs in they'll obviously jam together and you won't be able to fix them properly and then the other thing is where you've got the actual timber studs on either side it's also important not to put it too close to those because if you do again the same problem with a curve if you cut the hole right up to the edge of the timber when you try and press the lug in there won't be anywhere for it to go and of course you won't be able to attach that in there but otherwise they're fairly uh, straightforward things to use and again, get them the usual sizes to fit whatever you're putting on the front. Now, the other type of plastic box are these ones, which are designed for surface mounting. So you just simply put them on the wall, socket gears on the front, and that's why you just don't want to uh, obviously reset a hole into the wall, either because it's uh, generally a cheaper job, or uh, for some reason somebody didn't want it uh, cut into the wall. These are normally used with surface wiring as well, either just directly on the surface or in uh, some kind of trunking or something like that. 
And as with the metal ones, they're the same kind of sizes, so we've got the four sizes most commonly available here. So from the fairly useless 16, which is only good for a uh, standard light switch, 25, 35 and 47. Now the only thing with these is some of these distances do vary slightly between manufacturers, but they're all basically in the same similar size within a millimetre or two. Now of course one major problem with these is they're sticking out from the wall a considerable distance, and once you added the socket on the front then obviously even more, so these can tend to get damaged and uh, busted fairly easily. And these are also made of that hard, sort of uh, brittle type of plastic. So again, if you're going to knock into that with something, it's pretty much going to be destroyed. But uh, nevertheless, they have their uses, but they generally uh, found in the sort of cheaper and uh, lower quality types of installations. As I say, most people would want them flush and wires concealed in the wall. Now, of course, you can get doubles uh, with these as well. So here's a very typical example of a double. And uh, again, you can get the extra thick ones as well. So. See, they are pretty substantially sized items, but nevertheless going to put a cooker switch or something on the wall then. That's pretty much the thing you're going to use. Now some of these you see have the little terminal in the back here. Some of them uh, do not. It doesn't actually matter, particularly in this case, because of course the box is plastic, so you're not actually uh, connecting it to the benefit of the box. It's purely as a convenience feature, so that uh, if you've got wires or multiples of them, you could use that just to join them in there. And certainly on things like the light switch one, if you're going to put a plastic light switch on the front it won't have an earth terminal itself, so you can just use that one in the box there. But again, if it doesn't have one of those, not a problem, just uh, put the uh, wire into a separate connector, assuming it doesn't actually need one. And of course if you're putting a socket or something on the front, the wire would just go straight into the earth terminal of the socket anyhow. And again a metal light switch would have its own earth terminal as well. Now so these are made of that horrible brittle plastic, and in terms of removing the uh, parts here for the wires to go in, they've normally got a fair number of choices around there. Then it's unfortunately just a question of nibbling out with the uh, pliers there, and just sort of chipping away enough to get the cable in. And as you can see, it's that uh, horrible crunchy style of plastic, which, uh, if you're not careful, can end up busting the entire box into a horrible mess. So there's the sort of outer of that one, and then the inner parts can generally be busted through as well and you tied it up with a knife of course to make it uh, nice and tidy there. And that's pretty much that and then say the cabling can either be a surface clipped or uh, some of that mini plastic trunking or something similar but say generally uh, found in sort of cheaper and uh, more sort of low quality type installations. It's certainly not something you're going to do for anything of any quality. Now in terms of the thread size and everything, it's all exactly the same as for all of the other boxes, so metric 3.5 millimetres, and the spacing for the single and doubles, again, all exactly the same, so pretty much any manufacturer's items will fit onto any of these boxes. However, there's only one item to be aware of, and because these are visible, of course being on the surface, then there are minor differences between the design. So, for example, this one has uh, radius corners here, this is a Crabtree box, whereas this one has square angular corners, so if you take a socket like this one, which is a cram tree, it's designed to fit onto the box with the rounded corners, so as you can see there it just fits and matches up quite well. Now of course this will fit onto the uh, screw holes in this box here, but when you actually put it there you'll see that the corners don't actually match, so you've got sort of a pointy corner and then the rounded edge of the socket. I mean it's a minor cosmetic issue, but uh, certainly one to be aware of if you're not using the same ones or just replacing one at a later date. Now so these things are normally used with either surface wiring or the square plastic trunking or something similar, but uh, if you wanted to put uh, round conduit into these, which is generally going to be the plastic variety for this, do not be tempted to attempt to drill holes in here and then just put it in because uh, this type of plastic does not drill very well and attempting to drill into this is going to almost always result in a huge cracking and shattering and it's just going to break into pieces, so not suitable for that. If you do want to use conduit with it, then you can get boxes like this one. Unlike those, these are actually made from a bendy PVC type of material, and they usually come with a knockout there for the actual conduit entry. So 20mm hole, you can put your plastic conduit fitting straight in. And again, it's got one in the bottom as well, which uh, can also uh, bust out as well. And uh, if you do need to put additional holes in there, you can actually drill this, as it's fairly soft and uh, easily drilled plastic. So PVC boxes generally designed for use with PVC conduit, and again that's going to be a surface installation, so this is on the surface, conduit coming out the top there, 
course all fix on the surface as well. Other than that, they're exactly the same, same thread, same spacing, same everything else. It's just the material they're made from is that sort of flexible type material rather than the super brittle phenolic or bakelite type stuff. Now to go with those boxes there are a few items here which may be worth knowing about. Not going to be used that often if ever but uh, probably worth knowing that they do at least exist. Now this is the MK catalogue. Of course other manufacturers make uh, stuff as well. And have a look at this section here. We've got accessories for boxes and we've got this thing in the middle here, this 800ZIC. And what this is, is a metal flange essentially, which goes on the side of the metal flush boxes. So if you get two of these, they just clip on the side of the box. It essentially converts it into a similar thing to those plastic flush boxes. And it allows you to put the metal box in a plasterboard wall after the actual wall has been constructed in the same way as the plastic ones. However, one thing to note here, these just literally clip on the side, so it's a question of uh, clipping on the side, then sort of manoeuvring the box in place. And then as you tighten up the uh, screws, that's what holds it in position. But unlike the plastic ones, there's nothing to hold the box in the wall before you decide to screw it on there, so it can be a bit tricky in some cases to uh, stop the box sort of falling back into the plasterboard. But nevertheless, these things do exist, so if you really wanted to use them, well, again, there they are. And I think other manufacturers do make them as well, but uh, certainly not a very common product. Uh, this thing here, this 3710, is the extension stud, which we looked at in the previous video. And this thing at the bottom, this 3840 ZIC, this is a conversion bracket. And these are designed for light switch boxes. Now, modern switches have the screws at the set fixing, which is the outer ones on this. But there were some older boxes. Again, we're talking sort of 40, 50 years ago, which were considerably narrower and had fixing screws at 42 millimeters apart. So if you find a house that's got those boxes in it and you want to convert to new switches, then this is the thing that goes in the box. Basically, this part goes inside the existing box and screws in the back to that. It also gives you the earth terminal because those boxes generally didn't have one. And then you can put your modern switch over the top and use the two screws either side. So if you get old boxes like that, then you can get these brackets as a conversion. Again, it's a pretty unlikely and rare item, but nevertheless, uh, they do exist. So if you come across old switch boxes with weird spacing, then that bracket uh, is just the job to convert. Now, just for a point on the plastic boxes, you can get things like these, which are for plastic, obviously, and they're flush mounting, but they're not designed to go into the wall. What they're designed for is to go into dado or skirting trunking, and if we have a look at the uh, skirting trunking here, you can see it's just basically this big plastic uh, moulding there with several compartments. And then when you want to put a socket or whatever in there, those boxes are what fits into this trunking and then allows you to put your standard socket things on the front. So uh, those do exist, but uh, say don't buy those for any other purpose because they only have that one function. And uh, even worse with these is that uh, they are generally not the same between different manufacturers of the trunking. So, Again, you do need to buy those specific to the trunking that you're installing. And if there's some already installed, you need to get the ones which are compatible with it. And there's that particular style there. And so it just clips in at the top and bottom and gives you the uh, usual fixing points. Here's another style, and I see a slightly different shape on the top there. Again, principles are the same. The boxes just clip into that. And then you put your standard sockets on the front. Just be aware that, again, the boxes may be slightly different design, so uh, not necessarily going to fit into other manufacturers' trunking. So uh, certainly we're getting the same one, otherwise there may be problems. And again, these are useless for anything else, they're only specifically designed for use with that particular trunking system. So uh, that's pretty much it for this time, and until next time, thanks for watching.